Long ago in the land of Russia was a city of Novograd. This was a port city with cobble roads, steeples and a bustling marketplace that was teeming with traders from dawn to dusk. During sunset, a cool breeze blew on the banks of the river Novograd that was the meeting place of many lovers who would gaze at the ships and whisper sweet nothings into each other's ear. In this city lived a young musician named Sacco who played the Goosley, a musical instrument that was made of wood and had 12 strings. Sacco entertained guests of merchants and noblemen and used to make a lot of money there. Sarko loved the city of Novograd and many times he would take a stroll on the banks of the river Novograd and enjoy himself there. But there was something in Sarko that hurt him a lot. He wanted a companion whom he could share his happiness and sadness, his success and his failures. One such evening, Sarko sat on the banks of the river Novograd with a goosey in his hand, began plucking a merry tune and sighed, My lovely river Volvo, if only you were a woman, I'd marry you and be with you here in the city I love. As soon as he uttered these words, huge waves began to slap at the bank and poof, a large shape emerged out of water. It was a man with a pearl encrusted crown and a flowing beard. The man looked at Sarko and told him, My dear musician, I am the king of the sea, and your music has reached the bottom where it has pleased us greatly. Soon we would have a feast, and I would love you to play there. Thank you, Your Majesty, trembled Sarko. But how would I get there? Ha! It is under the sea, of course. I am sure you will find your way. Poof! <coughs> disappeared, leaving Sarko confused. The next morning, Sarko booked himself on a ship that was leaving for Novograd. The ship sailed past Lagoka, the Gulf of Finland, and with every passing moment, Sarko was filled with a nervous anticipation. Standing on the railings, he murmured, In all the white sea, how am I ever going to find the palace of the king? As soon as he uttered these words, the ship shuddered to a halt. Some of the sailors cursed in fear, while others prayed for their lives. Sarko thought of this as a sign, and before anyone could stop him, he picked his ghostly, ran, and jumped into the water. Down, down, deep into the sea sank Sarko, and he reached the river flow. And beyond him lay a white stone palace. Sarko was past the gates, and there was a huge set of wooden doors. The doors flung open to reveal a giant hall that was filled with guests and royal attendants. And at the end of the hall, lay the sea king and the sea queen, majestically dressed. Sarko picked up his ghostly, began plucking a merry tune. Soon all the fish started to swim in graceful figures, and the river, river maidens slept and swung. Faster yelled the king. And soon the king started to dance. He whirled and whirled, leapt and swung, and everybody was enjoying themselves. The sea queen was, however, watching all of this with anxiety, walked up to Sadko and whispered in his ear, My dear musician, it seems to you that the king merely dances in this hall, but above us, the sea is tossing ships like toys and giant waves are breaking onto the shore. Alarmed, 
started to pull the string of his gooseley until it broke. The music stopped and there was a moment of defining silence. The king was mighty pleased with Sanko's effort and wanted to reward him. My dear musician, it's time you choose your bride. Daughters, step forth. The sea king's daughters went forth. Each one was prettier than the one before. However, with a heavy heart, Sarko had to reject them. What's wrong, musician? Too hard to choose? Then I invite you to the one who fancies you the most. The bold Princess Volkova. The princess went forward. Her green eyes were sparkling. Soft brown hair fell on her shoulders. A wonderful smile pursed her lips. Dear musician, for long I have been listening to your music. And today my dream has come true. But Sarko had to reject her because the city of Novograd was his home and he wanted to be there for the rest of his life. The princess was heartbroken and the festive atmosphere that was there in the hall soon turned to despair. The next morning when Sarko woke up, he found himself not beside Princess Volkova, but the lovely river Volvo. The next few years were very good to Sarko. He became a merchant and one of the richest men in Novograd. He married a fine young lady who bore three children. He still played the goosey and had many children dance to his tunes. Sometimes at night, Sarko would pick up his goosey go down the banks of river Novograd and would play a haunting tune and at times he would see a lovely head pop up or was it just the moon's reflection on the river Volvo? Oh.